Hucklebug. On a bright spring morning in a small village of Hucklebugs in someone's backyard, Barry Hucklebug was born. There was nothing different about Barry. He was ordinary and fun-loving. For months and months after Barry was born, he played with the other bugs of the village. They would play hide-and-seek and and hucks and robbers. Early one day, Barry was called before the mayor of the little village. Barry, he said, you are of age now, and you must work as the others of the village do. Food for all must be gathered by all. Me, said an unbelieving Barry, but I don't want to. I want to stay with my friends. I want to run and play in the sunshine. Sternly, the mayor looked down at Barry and said, Everyone must work in this village, and you are no exception. Please start tomorrow morning. That is all. You may go now. Sadly, little Hucklebug walked back to his playmates. But since the mayor's news, he didn't feel like joining his friends. So Barry sat in a corner and pouted. What am I going to do? He said. The mayor is picking on me because I'm small. Suddenly, an idea came to him. I'll run away and live by myself. Nobody will bother me then. With that, Barry went straight to his room. He rummaged through his butterfly wings and old bumblebee tails until he found his yellow bandana. Carefully, he laid it on the floor and began packing. He packed his hand-knitted antenna warmers for cold winter mornings. He packed his favorite red t-shirt with a big, bold gold B. And last but not least, he packed his new orange sneakers for special occasions. Then Barry tied his bandana into a big, careful knot, threw it over his shoulder, and skipped away from the village. The farther he went, the happier Barry became. There were beautiful flowers all around him. He saw forests of silver blue grass and a blue sky overhead. What do I need of that old Hucklebug village? He laughed brightly. Out here I have everything I need. And snickering, he added, there's no one to tell me what to do. Once or twice he came upon some of his fellow bugs gathering food for the village. As soon as he saw them, he would quickly jump behind a tall weed. From there he laughed and sneered at them, for they had not thought to run away. After a time, Barry came to a rise in the path. Creeping slowly to the top, he discovered a furry caterpillar crawling along. Down below him he saw a giant's house. Wow! exclaimed Barry. I bet it would be a lot of fun to go down there. Just then the caterpillar turned and frowned at the runaway. If you're thinking of going down there, he grumbled, I'd think again. Laughingly, Barry twisted the caterpillar's antenna together. Then he raced down the hill to the huge house below. That caterpillar didn't know what he was talking about, he said. Nobody can tell me what to do. He ran, jumped, and giggled onto the lawn. And there he found the most amazing toys he'd ever seen in his entire life. There were gigantic squirt guns and mammoth baseball gloves, which were large enough to live in if he wanted. He saw a beach ball that was at least a hundred miles high. Barry felt as though he had found Hucklebug Heaven. Barry climbed to the top of the beach ball and began bouncing up and down. He was doing flips and jumping so high he didn't notice that the door of the house was open. Some giant kids were coming out to play. The beach ball went flying. Barry went flying. The kids were playing kickball. Barry picked himself up from the cool grass. What was that? he asked. Slowly he turned, and for the first time saw the giants. Wow, they are big, but maybe I can play anyway. With that, he ran over to join in their fun, but the giants didn't see him. Barry dodged from side to side. He managed to avoid being squashed by shoes as big as his house in Hucklebug Village. Hey kids, he shouted, can I play too? The giants were so busy laughing and giggling that they didn't hear him. Just by chance, one of the giant boys spied Barry standing in the grass. Carefully, he leaned down and looked Barry right in the eye. What a funny looking bug, he said. Then he called to his friends to come and look at Barry. Now, let me tell you, Barry was a little scared. In fact, he was a lot scared. He wanted to run away, but the giants blocked his path. With a mischievous grin, one of the giant boys pointed his squirt gun at Barry. Barry caught a full blast of water in his fuzzy face. He was really scared now and started to run away. Every place he turned, there was a giant trying either to step on him or to catch him. Scrambling over a leaf and under a twig, Barry tearfully made his escape up the path. Puffing and panting, he found his way back up to the top of the hill. The old caterpillar was still trying to untie his antenna, 
so Barry untied them for him. "'You were right, Mr. Caterpillar,' said Barry. "'I shouldn't have gone down there. "'I'm confused, and I don't know what to do. "'It was a mistake to run away from home. "'Now I am ashamed to go back.' Barry leaned against a toadstool and began to cry large purple hucklebug tears. The wise old caterpillar smiled a little smile and said, Little hucklebug, if you have learned from your mistake, it is not a mistake, but a lesson. As you grow older, you will make other mistakes, but never be afraid to admit them. Go home now and do what needs to be done. Always remember the lesson you've learned today. Barry wiped a tear from his eye then, thanking the caterpillar for his kindness, he headed home to Hucklebug Village. He walked through the beautiful flowers and the forests of silver-blue grass. Entering the village, he bravely marched up to the mayor and said, Mr. Mayor, I'm really sorry for running away. I've learned from my mistake, and it is a lesson I will always remember. I promise that I'll never run away again. The mayor patted Barry on the head and told him that he was forgiven. Since he had run away, though, he would have to work an extra day as punishment. Then the kind mayor smiled and told Barry to play for the rest of the day. Barry Hucklebug gleefully skipped away to join his friends at home. Mistakes are always mistakes, or so I've heard them say, but if it teaches a lesson, the mistake will go away.